Um, obviously, as you're doing this decentralized network, uh, people have to get paid, right? And so um, there's this uh, storage token, right? S T O R J, or uh, I think right. is, is what it is. Um, and there, you know, these tokens have become controversial in the uh, crypto industry. Uh, sure. The Bitcoin community thinks, you know, why not use Bitcoin? Uh, everybody else thinks, why not use XYZ token? Like, just talk a little bit about um, the use of this payment via a digital token or digital currency, and then kind of why create your own versus use one that already existed. Sure, sure. So we, um, uh, you know, and as I said, sort of clarify, you know, at, least, at least the way our, our economic model works right now, we quote prices in dollars, both, both for customers and for uh, the snows for the suppliers. Uh, and then customers can either pay us in fiat or in our token. Uh, and our suppliers get paid in token and we do a sort of spot conversion based off of, off of the existing price. Um, uh, but there are a lot of reasons why it's, it's great for us. First of all, again, we're, we're now paying thousands of people in 85 plus countries, right? Uh, sometimes small amounts, sometimes large amounts, being able to do it with, uh, using our token, being able to do, use things like smart contracts, really, really critical. Um, we've also programmatically built in, not only on the supply side, but on the demand side. So we've, uh, we've built a program, we call it the Open Source Partner Program, that also kind of turns things on the head in terms of demand sides, so rather than hiring lots of salespeople, as you talked about the centralized people doing, and then, you know, essentially, you know, what the cloud providers tend to do with the open source community is take great open source code, uh, give it away for free, you know, as a loss leader to drive more compute and storage and networking. We actually compensate the open source company, uh, uh, companies. So if they send users and data our way, we send money back to them and we do it programmatically using the token. Um, so for us, it makes the system work much faster, much more reliably. Of course, we've, we've, we funded our initial efforts, um, to a large extent, uh, based off of having a successful token sale back in, in May of 2017. Um, and, uh, for us, it's the right way to do things. Uh, it also gives us, um, an opportunity to also sort of further differentiate ourselves. We're, we're trying to be, um, not only sort of enterprise grade in terms of our storage, but also enterprise grade in terms of the governance and management. Of our Got it. And so do you feel like, uh, eventually, um, this is going to force kind of digital currencies, what, regardless of which one it ends up being, uh, yeah. into, um, kind of this entire cloud and storage world where whether you are a decentralized or centralized platform, like they've got to support it, or do you feel like you've got kind of an advantage and kind of a wedge into a market where that's not going to happen for a long time and, and you guys will kind of enjoy the, the first mover advantage there? Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good question. I mean, we, uh, uh, you know, I don't know whether the, uh, the crypto aspect of what we do ends up being a barrier to entry or not. Um, I suspect that if it does, it's, it's less important than the decentralized aspect of what we do. Right. I, I, I mean, I, we sort of internally say, uh, you know, um, you know, blockchain is much bigger than cryptocurrency. Decentralization is much bigger than blockchain. And we think it's like decentralized infrastructure in general is, is much bigger than any of them. There, that that's really the powerful thing is that you give tools that push things to the edge, if you will, and push push infrastructure into the hands of you know thousands, hopefully soon millions of people, you know, around the planet, um, and that that's really the big disruption. And and cryptocurrency and blockchain, these are all sort of primitives that enable that, but they're not the main story. Yeah, and, and one of the things that's really interesting just in computing in general to me is mm -hmm. uh, the centralized players have been trying to build kind of pseudo decentralized networks that they control, right? What I mean by that is all of yeah. these POPs and kind of localized uh, data centers right. and, and kind of infrastructure that, uh, for those that are unfamiliar with the space, uh, they basically are just pushing infrastructure from rather than having one data center in the US or, or, or in one area, how do we kind of break it up and put it closer to the user, but they still control it? It exactly. feels like it's already moving in the direction of decentralization from an infrastructure standpoint, just the ownership has stayed centralized. You guys really are saying, hey, we have decentralized ownership of the network and we have decentralized infrastructure and therefore that's the advantage, right? Right, right. And also we've designed things so that, you know, we're not a central point of failure, right? So for example, like if you're storing data with us, we don't have any of the keys. We have no way of knowing what's being stored, uh, no way of mining it, no way of uh, compromising it. And, and the same thing true for the storage node operators. So, you know, 
one sort of sort of clarification about how things work with us. If you upload a file to us to store it with us, it gets encrypted, so scrambled up with keys that only you have. It then gets split up into lots of pieces, uh, generally about 80 pieces, of which any 30 can be used to put it back in. And each of those 80 pieces goes to a different drive run by a different person on a different power supply in a different geographic location. And that level of decentralization does magic in terms of security, magic in terms of performance, magic in terms of, uh, of economics as well, right? Um, and, and that's really the key, right? It's not that we have created a network where we push stuff out to the edge. We've enabled the network that's <laughs> at the edge. That's awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and to me, like, you know, I'm biased because uh, sure. I kind of understood this more and more and more, but uh, it just feels like naturally this is where the world has to head, right? Like, like you guys are just yeah. ahead ahead of the curve. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think I think it has to, right? And I think I think this decentralized approach is really the only way to create a viable alternative to decentralized providers. And as good a job they do, and by the way, they they, they offer great services, right? But um, you know, again, if, if data is the new oil, we don't we don't want we don't want another uh, Rockefeller. And, it, and it's just it's a bad thing if if cloud computing, which is the most important computing trend, uh, is dominated by you know three of the five largest companies by market cap, that's, and nobody else can get in. That that's just, that's a bad bad situation. 